you think that you're going to get Ericsson and Fernandez in a midfield three and be able to compete with the best teams athletically and defensively, you've got no chance. Just stop being so grumpy about it and just say this is a this is a great story, Christian Ericsson. And it's a week on now, and now he has joined Manchester United. Do you stand by the comments that he doesn't improve Manchester United's best eleven? Yeah, when I look at it, yeah, because I think United are only going to play one number ten. If they play the old traditional Ajax way of, say, you know, the way City play with two number 10s or two eights, if you like, and one holder, I think that would be such a swing for them to be so attacking on the front foot. I can't see that happening. But actually, when he played at Brentford last year, he played as one of two eights in a three, didn't he? Yeah, but you, you're not going to get away with it. You, if you think that you're going to get Ericsson and Fernandes in a midfield three and be able to compete with the best teams athletically and defensively, you've got no chance. So you don't think he'll be in the starting eleven? He'll play. He'll play his share of games because it's you don't have the same eleven for a season. We know that. We see the rotation. Now I think it's five subs this season as well. So yeah. there's going to be impacts off the bench. He's, but he's not going to play ahead of Fernandez. His numbers. Some people might prefer him to Fernandez, but his numbers don't suggest he's, he's at Fernandez's level. Well, his numbers actually are terrific, and um, in fact, I think he, he averages a goal involvement every two games in the Premier League. Fifty-two goals and sixty-six assists in two hundred and thirty-seven Premier League games for Tottenham and Brentford combined. Um, and you're a Manchester United fan. Danny says Manchester United fans won't get excited about Christian Eriksen. Is that true? No, I don't think so. I, I think Danny's been a bit curmudging me, to be honest, because... That doesn't sound like Danny. Um, <laughs> it doesn't sound like anybody, don't know, never heard that word. I, I think you can pick holes in any transfer, and I think the tendency is to do so. But I think in this case, you look at Christian Eriksen, the journey that he's been on, and obviously I was commentating the game for Talk Sport 2 when he collapsed on the pitch, uh, in Copenhagen, if you'd have told me then that he would be joining one of the biggest clubs in the world not that long later, I wouldn't have believed you. I don't think he would have believed you. I don't think anybody in in the stadium would have believed you. So I get that, but that's the this emotion. A, Take the emotion out. Story. Take the emotion. Out stop of being it. so grumpy about it and just say this is a this is a great story, Christian Eriksson. Um, and I think he showed his ability. Then he's not being grumpy. He's just saying he doesn't think he's world class and he might not get yeah, into the first eleven. Who is world class? World class is is an overused phrase. Well, you give me. You can count the number of world class players in the Premier League on one hand. I think you're probably right, and, and that's why I said he's not. So I'm right, is what you're saying. But the, the you are. That's what you're right. I, I agree with you. If you're a United fan after the disaster of last season, you're hoping that they invest money in players that are going to make you go wow. And the question to me about will United fans be excited by this? I think they'll be. Mm, it's all right. Are, are you but, asking but, for them to do that, or are you asking them to actually build a team a rather squad. than a collection of individuals, which has been their to, modus operandi for too long? I think a coach can improve players. That's for sure. Good coach. We've seen that. But I think United's best eleven as of now with the squad they've got, no matter how well coached by anybody, isn't near United or City. Manchester United mm-hmm. scored seven set-piece goals in the Premier League last season. Only Watford and Norwich, both relegated from the Premier League, scored fewer. Eriksen created almost two chances per game from set-pieces in his short spell whilst he was at Brentford. He does give them something that they haven't had. You think he takes set plays better than Fernandez? Well, I, I mean, the statistics well, what's bear the out the How many did Fernandez make chances from set plays? Well, nowhere near as many. They you didn't score the any goals. You, you just said that without knowing. They didn't score any. They didn't score any goals from. You're set talking pages. about making chances or scoring goals. They're two different things. Well, he 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 ended up producing enough assists to keep Brentford in the Premier yeah, League but, but, last season. But what I'm saying is, Brentford are Brentford are a team that rely on set plays. And United aren't. They're a team that tends to think they can win games without relying on set plays. Bruno Fernandes, with his set plays, probably made somewhere near equal chances to what Ericsson made at Brentford. You can find stats to suit your argument. The numbers of Bruno Fernandes since he's come to United, I checked this out, is actually so much better than I realised. Mm. He's up there, by the way. Well, so, his first so, 18 months were outstanding. So, Ericsson, Eric, season before last, he got 28 goals in a season. Yeah, but last season he was poor. You know, Bruno was a big issue Still got for, double United, figures, for United though. last season. And, listen, you'll know what it's like. Competition comes in. I'm sure part of the idea behind signing Ericsson is it's to a, give Bruno Fernandes that kick up the backside <laughs> that he probably needs. Because well, I'm for not the first say, time, he's got competition. I'm not saying it's a bad sign. I never said that once. It makes sense. He's free. He's experienced. He's talented. He's a he's good, a good char- character. Good character. And he's going he's gonna to give them strength in depth. Better strength in depth than they probably had last season off the bench. But if you're talking about bridging a gap to the two best teams, I think, in Europe, 
They needed be- they need better. But Manchester United aren't in a position to do that, are they? They've got are they so not? far. One of the biggest go. clubs in the world. Well, clearly they can't not. They sign can't better even, than a free transfer. Well, they from can't Denver. even get a, a guy that Barcelona don't want on their wage bill out of of Barcelona and get him to sign for Manchester United. But that's because the, the, the player doesn't want to go. Well, but also what? Gap well, why they, not? What, what, because he's at, he's at Barcelona. And because he doesn't want to go to Manchester but United because they're in a rebuilding they, process. What gap are they trying to bridge? Are they trying to catch City and Liverpool, or are they trying to catch Chelsea and Tottenham? The first objective is to get back in the top four. Correct. Yeah, and he will help. But I, I think if you're looking at United's problems last season, and I think we can all agree that defensively they're all over the place. They couldn't keep clean sheets. They they tended to make chances and score goals. Mm. I think there's definitely going to improve. Got to be an improvement, you'd think, with a new coach. When you look at Sancho and Rashford and their contribution and output, I th- I don't think scoring goals with the players they've got is going to be that much of a problem. Yeah, the Ronaldo thing. We'll we'll see how that develops, but they'll have to replace him if he goes. But defensively and shape and their 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 setup is where they're going to have to be better because they were too easy to play against. Hence the fact I think if you play one holding midfielder like Liverpool do and City do and two players ahead, which might be what he's thinking going ahead. If you have Ericsson and Fernandez ahead of De Jong, for example, that's that's a very attack-minded three and very technically gifted, but it won't compete physically mm. with the top boys. I but mean. the midfield's been a problem for, for years for Manchester United, so Ericsson improves the options no end. I, I think it's a good signing. I'm excited by the signing. Maybe I'm excited by the story. And why not? Sometimes... Let's get wrapped up in the emotion. I'm pleased for him, by the way. I mean, what what a, what an amazing finish to your career to be at one of the biggest clubs in the world. And the belief he's probably got in himself, he'd think, I'll take this by the horns and I'll show people what I've got. 03717 if you're a Manchester United fan. I did find out that Ericsson created an average of 2.9 chances per game last year, more than any other Manchester United player. So he did do more than Bruno Fernandes. But will he do it in a, in a Manchester United shirt? Will he be in the starting 11? Let us know your thoughts. You can get in touch uh, in the comments section on the YouTube and the Facebook stream as well. Or you can get in touch via Twitter. It's at TalkSport. We'd love to hear from you. Jim White and Simon Jordan. Monday to Friday mornings from 10 on AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.